Hi, I'm Dr. T, and I'm a pediatrician. On Ask Dr. T, I answer health questions from teens. Questions ranging from safe sex, to self-love, to questions about body parts. Let's get this episode started. Hey, I'm doing a two-part series on vaginal anatomy. So we'll do five questions now and then five questions later. Okay, so question number one. Why won't my tampon go in my vagina? So the answer to that, it's tough to say for sure, but I would say there are maybe three main reasons why. So the first one is certainly the hymen. So we've talked about this before, but some people have a little bit more extra hymen tissue or have a piece of hymen that crosses the vaginal opening that can make tampon insertion difficult. So you could certainly take a look with a mirror and see if you can recognize if there's a piece of hymen going across the, the vaginal opening. You can also talk to a doctor about it. The one thing I would say is that sometimes, regardless of how much hymen is there, you can still use a water-based lube on the tampon itself to help kind of slide things in. So the first reason again might be extra hymen tissue. The second reason might be tight vaginal muscles in the vaginal wall. And think about whenever you get tense or nervous, your muscles can tighten up. The same thing happens in the vaginal area. So if you are nervous or getting um, anxious about inserting a tampon and you know it hasn't really worked well before, it's certainly possible that your vaginal muscles tense up. So the best thing you can do there is try to relax, get nice and comfortable, uh, and then make sure you're positioned well. So either put one leg up on the edge of a tub or on the bathroom, on the toilet seat, um, or you can even lay down on your back with your knees bent and try to insert again toward your lower back. And then the last thing that it could be would be dryness. Now, I know you think if you're on your period, things should already be pretty moist down there with blood, but that's not always the case. You know, you don't have a constant flow. Things kind of come and go. And so if you are having some vaginal dryness, again, that water-based lube can help with insertion of the tampon. So again, three main reasons would be hymen, tight vaginal muscles or dryness, or all three, but using a little lube and relaxing will kind of get you headed in the right direction. And then if you still have concerns, you can chat with the doctor and they can take a look down there and see if there's anything else going on. All right, question number two. Is it normal for your vagina to have big flaps? Now, I wanna talk a little bit about terminology here because this is the question that I got. I suspect what you mean, is it normal for the vulva or the labia to be big. And so the vagina itself is the canal that leads to the cervix and the uterus. The area around the vagina is called the vulva. And within the vagina, there are the uh, labia, so the uh, labia minora, which are the larger flaps, the labia majora, which is really where all the pubic hair is. Um, and then you have your pee hole, so the urethra, as well as the vagina and some other things down there. But so I suspect what you're asking about is, is it normal for your labia minora to be large? Yes. Labia come in all shapes and sizes. Sometimes one or both will be a little bit longer. And some people actually have very little labia minora at all. So what I would recommend for you is first, love what you got. The second thing is though that if your labia are very long or if they interfere with things like uh, some of your clothes, if they catch on things, or if they rub and cause skin issues, then that would be a reason to talk to a doctor. Uh, there are a couple things that they can do to help, either with skin moisturizing recommendations or there's a procedure called labiaplasty. It's usually reserved for older individuals, but your gynecologist when you're older can talk to you about that as well. Question number three, how do I get rid of razor bumps around my vaginal area? So the first tip, tip I would have is practice great shaving techniques so you have minimal razor burn anyway. That being said, some people are just more prone to razor burn. But my shaving tips would be, first of all, make sure you're using a sharp, fresh razor every time. 
Uh, two, using some sort of a soap or a lubricant between the skin and the razor. So usually moisturizing in the shower while you shave. Three, go with the direction of hair growth. Don't go against it if you're meeting resistance with the razor. That means you're going against hair growth and that leads to more razor burn. And then lastly, moisturize when you're done shaving. So just apply a gentle lotion down there to replace some of the good skin oils that you've shaved off, essentially. Now, again, some people are just more prone to razor burn or sometimes it just happens. And so one thing you can do is a low dose steroid cream down there. Something like a 1% hydrocortisone ointment or cream that you can buy at the drugstore. A lot of people are concerned about if you use it too much, you can get steroid withdrawal or thinning of the skin, but really that's with chronic long-term use. And what I'm talking about here, using it a couple times a day for a couple of days until things kind of clear up. It'll help with the redness and the itchiness, but it won't be necessary to use for long periods of time. Uh, one, it'll clear things up, but two, your, your hair will start to grow anyway, and so long-term steroid use really shouldn't be an issue down there. But that's how you can kind of help relieve your razor burn symptoms. All right, question number four. Is it normal to have buildup at the hood of the vagina? And again, I suspect that it was, this is more the hood of the vulva area. Could be around the vagina too. What I think you're talking about is smegma which is a combination of dead skin cells and the natural oils that are produced in the private area. And this can happen for male anatomy as well as female anatomy. And it's totally normal. It's absolutely something that happens to all bodies. But the way that you can kind of help get rid of it, soap and water, don't scrub in the vagina, but you can scrub around the vulva area. and. The soap is going to help kind of break up those oils. Oil can be notoriously difficult to remove. But smegma kind of gets stuck in those crevices and folds. Totally natural. Just do a good cleaning down there and you should be fine. Don't feel bad about it. Question number five. What color is your vagina supposed to be? Well, that depends on primarily your genetics. So again, if we're talking about the vulva region, so the area around the vagina, it can be darker than the surrounding skin and the rest of your body. It can be lighter than your skin on the rest of your body. And it can be the same color as the skin on the rest of your body. There are all sorts of variations. But the skin in the vagina, that is generally going to be more pink, like the inside of your mouth, uh, because they're what's called mucosa. So uh, most of our mucosa in our bodies is going to be pinkish because of the blood flow. So usually vaginas are going to be more pink in color, but then the surrounding area, the vulva, can be all sorts of shades, and it's usually based on genetics. Sometimes if you shave a lot and have like some scarring down there, the skin can get a little bit darker, but otherwise it's usually what you're born with, and that's okay. All right, so this is part one of a two-part series on vaginal anatomy questions. And remember, if you have a question for Ask Dr. T, you can either respond in this video or submit through my website, askdrt.net.